And then get this garbage out of here. This is an iPod channel now. Deal with it. All right, so I've got, you know, before I even get into these, let me give you guys a little bit of backstory here. So I've been working on another video, um, basically just testing the runtime of different SP batteries and just other batteries in general, because fuck it, why not? And um, I've been using a phone as a time-lapse camera to, you know, just try and keep track of that, because I'm not going to sit here for eight hours with a stopwatch and do that, or 12 hours, or whatever the heck it may be. And um, originally, I was using my iPod as a timer. You know, you just turn it on, set the backlight to stay on always, plug it in, Bob Gianti. Turns out, this one did not like that. This one is now without a battery, and um, <laughs> that's pretty much all I have to say about that. So I still have the battery. I haven't gotten rid of it, but it is a little bit bloated. It's super hard to tell with the low with the small form factor but essentially what happened was it would be plugged in and then the battery would die but how does that happen it's plugged in i don't know <laughs> I, I don't know so yeah that died and um i figured well what the hell it's the original battery this thing's had the same battery for going on 15 years now i guess it's time so then i figured i'd uh well quite frankly i Completely forgot I had this one, so I skipped it over. Um, I tried a few other things. I went and found one of my old phones, a Lumia 640, and turns out as this was sitting there, this one went bad too. You can see the battery is supposed to be about four or five millimeters, but if we measure it in the middle there, you'll notice, oh, look at that. It's almost six and a half. Oh, it is six and a half right at the hump. Yep. Nice. So, yeah, that wasn't an option. And, um, oops, throwing shit everywhere. I was filming the time lapses with my uh, Huawei Honor 5, my old phone here. And uh, as it turns out, I actually had to take the rear cover off because this battery went too. That's probably hard to tell, but you can see how puffy that is. I absolutely should not be using this, but I do not have a choice at the moment. Um, because all of my phones, except for this one, and my actual cell phone that I use, make calls and stuff, have all just shit the bed on me. And, um, well, I decided I wanted to start using my iPod again. Unfortunately, I can't, because the battery's dead. But then I remembered I had this old fourth gen garbage in my uh in a drawer basically um whipped it out and you'll never guess what the problem is yeah this thing needs a new battery too so long story short i have already ripped it apart here's the battery right here in this mess uh this is an instant aftermarket battery that i put in it um rather than try and splice into this connector i just hooked one of my battery leads onto one of the straps and then just, oh, excuse me, and then just rubber banded the other lead to the casing of the battery and then attached the other leads to a battery connector and tried checking it out that way. This is a fully charged battery, right? A fully charged lithium ion battery should be 4.2 volts. Check out what this thing is. 3.8, right? In the time since I took it off the charger, probably 20 minutes ago, it has lost 0.4 volts. If that's not bad, I don't know what is. A battery should not self-discharge that much. And the fact that this thing has means it is complete garbage and I could have spliced into it if I wanted to. So that leads us to the conundrum. I want to listen to music in my car. On a normal day, I just use my phone because it's only every a few minutes at a time, but I really like having buttons, clicky. Um, and you guys know my car. Well, probably not, but I did make a video a long time ago of me fixing the cassette adapter to use in my car, so if that's any indication, Bluetooth is not an option. Um, I could use my Zune. I'm one of the few people with not just one, but two 
completely working zooms still. Uh, but the problem is the time has come to sync it again, and I can't get the software running on Windows 10 because Microsoft tried pretending this thing doesn't exist. So we're back to the iPod again. Um, instead of ordering a new battery like I did for the fifth gen I have that I normally use, uh, I'm just going to see if I can't get something to fit. I have a whole stack of batteries in my parts drawer because I'm one of those weird people who just, you know, whenever I'm out shopping, which isn't much anymore, as I'm sure you guys know, um, you know, if there's just some obscure battery for like a camera or cell phone or something on clearance, I'll just buy that because fuck it, you know, maybe I can find a use for it. But unfortunately, very few of those actually fit in this thing. Now, I'm a little bit better off than most because even though this is a hard drive model iPod, I've got a compact flash in there. But I did find that, hey, look, that looks familiar. These batteries kind of mostly fit. Uh, but while I was messing about with that, I found a DS Lite battery that I think might fit even better. And indeed it does. Now, this garbage says 200 milli or 2,000 milliamp hours. It's closer to 800. But it's good enough for our purposes, and that'll fit significantly better. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and unplug my compact flash mod. And yes, I know 4 gigabytes is not a lot, but I have very particular tastes, and I heavily curate my music collection. Um, so what we need to do to get this to work, I'm going to put this aside. We don't need this, but we do need this. I need to continue taking this apart. I want the control board off this. Um, in hindsight, it's probably not the best control board since it killed this cell, but it might have something in here that the iPod needs to communicate. I don't know how friendly iPods are to just throwing in aftermarket batteries. Well, I mean, clearly it's fine since that's what this is. But, I don't know, this might have some electronics on the uh, control board itself that the iPod is looking for. So we're just going to salvage that. And, to be fair to Instin, uh, even though this battery does not have that many cycles on it, Batteries do only have a shelf life of a few years, and I've had this battery for at least five. Probably more. But either way, I'm still never going to buy another battery from them again. Fuck it. If you're not 100% comfortable doing this, you should absolutely not take apart batteries. This is a really good way to hurt yourself. But I'm uh, what what you say. I'm not not a professional. I just play one on TV. Uh, Gonna cut the tape. It'll be so much easier. I don't know how much of that tab I'll need, so I'm just trying to salvage as much as possible. Um, oh, it's already labeled. I was just about to go check the polarity again, but that's B minus, and I don't see it on here. It's probably under this red thing. B plus. Yep. All right. And it really doesn't. Oh wait, never mind. Yeah, it does. I don't know what this does. Now that might just be like a cheap little charge module or something. Uh, the writing on it is TXY8205A. 
next line, SYH52R. It looks almost like a little EEPROM module, but based on the fact that there's only two discrete components, that might just be like a charge controller or something. All right, so this is garbage. I'm going to recycle this and this and this and eventually this. <laughs> and uh, let's move on to newer, better things. I haven't tested this battery uh, in a very long time, so I could be just as poor in just as poor a situation. Hopefully not. But we'll see. Oh, it's already way better at four volts. It was probably fully charged when I put it away, which is not something that you're supposed to do. But um, I had a plan for it, and then that plan probably fell through. Uh, so, what I want to do with this one, I'm going to take it out of its container. I'm going to strip it down the same way I did the iPod battery because just like my SP batteries I might have a use for this plastic shell and since I don't need it for the iPod I'd rather save it. Though I certainly appreciate the novelty of having DS Lite parts Oh man. Oops. Oh, that's interesting. Ooh. All right, check this bad boy out. I say that as I continue peeling. Hang on, almost there. I think that explains why when I tested this, I mean, obviously, this thing can't be 2,000 milliamp hours, but save that. There's this big, like, pad on the bottom of this thing. Like, what the fuck is this for? To make the battery seem bigger than it really is? It is not going to come off neatly, but... I mean, you can see how thick that thing is. Anyway, I want... <clears throat> I want to desolder that, but that's not going to happen. I can desolder this one, though. Oh, this has the exact same thing on it. Interesting. Well, Mako, if it has the exact same battery control electronics on it, why are you bothering to transfer? Because this has the right connector on it. Uh, okay, so now... I want to save this and this, you know, maybe I can make another mod for the DS Lite or something. Save that, just pop a new cell in there. Bob John T. Anyway, that's another project for another day. I've got to tin these things. Wish I had something better to lean this up against that isn't just a stack of batteries, but here we are. Now, let's plan out the placement. Uh, I can't remember which side is which. I'm pretty sure the casing is the positive and then the terminal is the negative. Nope, I had that backwards. Okay, that makes more sense. I'm thinking of those button cells. So this whole thing is a ground and then this little itty bitty terminal is the positive lead 
means we want I'm gonna have to like stitch that on that's gonna be weird so I'm gonna do this like that yeah actually I'm gonna snip this off And you shouldn't do this, but again, I, I keep saying, look at all this stuff you shouldn't do, and then watch me do it. <laughs> but we're just going to solder straight to this terminal here. I think it's going to be okay, because I don't have to get it that hot. Because there's already a little bit of nickel spot welded to it. Then, you can take this thing. And solder that down on top. I'm gonna cut off this curled up part though. Just solder that down. It's not the best, but I think it'll be more than good enough. And then this one, I'm going to fold that out. And I'm thinking we can just kind of maneuver the soldering iron and get that in there. I'm going to have to remove the existing one. That's all right. That's easy enough. kind of go for it. It's not soldered down very well. Nope. Okay. Let's try tinning this this time. that'll hold nicely now. Indeed it does. Excellent. I wonder if these are actually the same battery cell. That is suspiciously sized. Oh no, it's the iPod one is just a hair bigger. Oh well. Snip off that extra, and fuck it, we'll put the uh, this wrapping on it. It does not need a battery wrap, but it absolutely should have one. Protect both it and the iPod. And I'm going to take a big old gob of Kapton, throw it over the top as well. Gob. What am I talking about? It's tape, not glue. Oh, and the best part is this battery is already charged enough. So I should just be able to throw this back together. Of course, the camera's probably going to cut out by then. But it's okay. We're almost done. We're almost there. Bear with me. Boom. Boom. 
when someone rips this apart in a few years and it says uh, MDS Lite in there, you're going to be really confused. That's okay. It seems to fit nicely. Where did I put my... There it is. Storage. Compact flashcards are still really expensive. It's kind of ridiculous. I have a compact flash to... Um, oh, I need to stick this down. I peeled off my tape. I have a compact flash to SD card adapter. That thing was like 20 bucks. But it works really nicely. Just, you know, not the cheapest. Okay. And if all went well, should be good to put this back together. Try it out. Ooh, ooh, ooh! It's alive! Nice. I even got my backlight. And yeah, you can see, it only recognizes the four gigs, but it's because it only has a four gig card in it. Uh, let's see if it charges. Or if it blows up. Seems to charge. It's a step in the right direction. Well, here's one thing that it's doing now that it wasn't before. I have it sitting here, and it shows a nearly full battery. Every time I had it unplugged, it would just instantly drop to dead battery and say, your battery is too low, please charge it. And then you charge it, and it would just shut off anyway. But, oh, this is, this is exciting. I, I have music now. And this one's actually synced. Unlike my zooms. Oh, hey, this one works now. I mean, of course, this one has way more storage, but I mean, I'm still only using about the same. Da -da. Yeah, you can see I've added some to my collection since then. But whatever, that's besides the point. I'd call that a mission success. And now I don't have to worry about ordering parts for this piece of garbage. Thanks for watching, guys. Have an excellent night.